I think nothing comes as, as a surprise to my parents at this point. Their favorite song is Molly in Mexico, which is amazing. <laughs> that, like, that was one of my favorites. That's one of theirs. I That's literally that. their favorite. <laughs> Hey friends, it's your girl, Emily Curl, and today we're hanging out with one of our iHeart faves who just released his new album, All For Nothing. We've got Lau here with us. Lau, it's always so good to see you. It's so good to see you, thank you. First and foremost, congratulations on the new album. I feel like I've seen you so much this year, and every single time we've been discussing the album, gearing up for its release. Take me back the night before it was released. What's going through your mind? How are you feeling? What are the emotions? Yeah, you're right. I'd been, I'd been working on it for a really long time, you know, made it during lockdown time so it's really crazy that it's finally out and i'm out in the world and touring and everything it feels yeah it feels amazing i mean these records and these tracks are these you know personal experience are you playing with imagination a little bit where did they come from super personal i mean the the album is really kind of like me trying to get back in touch with my inner child you know as i'm as i'm growing older and yeah it was definitely a lot of kind of light and dark but uh I think it balanced together really nicely, so. Of all the tracks, what was the easiest to write? Which one just like flowed out of you? I feel like Better Than This was really easy to write because a lot of the album was like freestyled and that was one that was like, yeah, heavily freestyled, so. I feel like most of that song came in like 30 minutes to an hour or something like that. On the other side of that, what was the most challenging song to write? Honestly, 26, just because of what it's about, like I felt like really self-conscious while writing that song because I didn't want the song to come across as like, uh, like complaining in any way. It's just that, you know, the album was very like, this part of my life has been you know, like realizing that nothing in the outside world, no external anything like was able to like heal what I was feeling on the inside, you know? And my last album, I talked a lot about like loneliness and stuff. And yeah, so it was kind of just setting the stage for all that. Let me make an observation because again, I've been listening to the album nonstop. It's so good. There's, there's so many things to explore. 26, you open with it and it feels like this coming of age story. I also thought it was interesting that you end with first grade. Yeah. And so it kind of goes back to an earlier point in, in your life, an earlier time, very different time periods. Was that, you know, an intentional creative decision? And why did you decide almost to book in those two? Yeah, no, as I was kind of making the songs and I had those two, I thought it was like a perfect start and ending. It was either going to start with first grade and end with 26, but I felt like 26 just with the sound and everything that it comes in with is like a perfect opener. It's kind of like a prelude to the album and then first grade is like a nice little like non-resolution, but also a resolution at the same time. You also get introspective. Hey Ari, that's another yes. one that stuck out to me. Tell me a little bit about this one and the inspiration behind it. Yeah, Hey Ari is kind of just like a little bit of an open letter to myself, but I guess everyone can <laughs> listen to it. It's kind of just like a, a check-in, you know, because amidst all the chaos and all of the uh, things that may not be so good for me, it was just to check in with myself to make sure I'm doing all right. With being you know, so open and vulnerable on the album, were you nervous to, to share any of the tracks or any of the record with your family and friends? Honestly, I think nothing comes as, as a surprise to my parents at this point. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> Their favorite song is Molly in Mexico, which is amazing. <laughs> That, like, that was one of my favorites. That's one of theirs. I That's literally that. their favorite, which is so good. <laughs> Another one I love too is Stay Together. That yeah. initially just like caught my eye too. Was this inspired by a true story? Yeah, this is just kind of looking back at a, at a old, you know, long time ago relationship and kind of, you look back in the old relationship and be like, that could have been the rest of my life. And here I am now kind of healing all these other parts of myself. And it's sort of like, I'm thankful that that got me here now, you know, as, as opposed to still being in that and kind of reflecting on that. Yeah, of all the tracks on the album, is there one you're most proud of? I would say Bad Trip is my personal favorite. It just sounds like a lot oh. of the music I listened to growing up and it's just like different for me, but I think my voice feels really nice on it. And yeah, I love that song. What was the first album growing up that you loved? That you were like, okay, I'm, I'm obsessed with this. Ooh, first album I loved growing up. <sighs> I don't know. I know even... mine was the main. I remember being obsessed with this one Yo, main. Oh, the main. <laughs> yes. yes. It's so good. The main is so good. What band poster did you have on your wall? I was, uh, I mean, I was obsessed with like Never Shout Never, The Main, The Ready Set, yes. um, Owl City. All of that. Owl City, a little vanilla yeah. twilight. Oh, oh yeah. yeah, oh yeah. Well, we're so excited too because you're kicking off the premier event and performance of iHeartLand and Roblox, and we can't wait to see it in the metaverse. I How know. does it feel to launch iHeartLand? Honestly, I feel like insanely, insanely honored because it's such a huge thing. So I'm just thankful that I can do it. It's going to be super fun. And um, yeah, it's mind blowing, honestly. It's so cool, the metaverse. Like I've, I've learned more and more about it. But again, where music and gaming can combine, if you were to choose one loud song to be in a video game, what song would it be? It would probably be 
Fuck, I'm lonely. That song, probably. I don't know why, it just sounds kind of like a video game to me, the sound of it. Yeah, I could see that. You're playing in virtual reality, you're also playing in real reality. You're going on the All For Nothing tour, which is so exciting. Yes. You played a couple shows. How has it been being back on the road, being back with your fans? So good. Like, I feel like uh, I'm thankful for the rest, but like, I was so ready to get back out again. And just like, I have like pretty much two new albums worth of music to play, you know? Because How I'm Feeling came out right before everything shut down. So it's, it's just yeah. been amazing. Is there a track in particular you're excited to play to a live crowd? I'm really excited about Hey Ari Live stripped down. It's just really, it's a nice moment. Which one now do your fans go crazy for when you play it? Modern Loneliness is definitely a crazy one. I'm So Tired. I'm So Tired definitely goes crazy. Hailey Kiyoko is also joining you on the store, which is amazing. She's yeah. such a talent. How did you guys first get connected? Just through some like mutuals and stuff in music. And um, yeah, no, I'm, I'm really excited. She's amazing. It's gonna be, yeah, it's super sick. Well, we're so excited for you, Lel. Thank you so much for your time. Congratulations on the new yeah. album and congrats on iHeartland. We can't wait to see you on the road and in the metaverse. Yeah, thank you so much. I'm super stoked. Thanks for checking out our interview with Lel. You can stream his new album, All For Nothing. It's out now on iHeartRadio. I will see you guys next time. Hey guys, thanks so much for watching. Did you like that video? You can check out more over here. And don't forget to subscribe to iHeart right here. And if you're already a longtime fan, make sure you ring the bell down below so you don't miss a single video. Bye guys.